What's up, peeps? Just chilling this afternoon after uh, working on more music. I um, again, the uh, creative process has been opened and uh, really um, thankful and just um, sticking to the discipline. A bit of coffee does help. But I thought I would go ahead and answer a thread. James Croxton, the real, is it? Um, he uh, has this project for school. Let's do an interview. And so um, I thought, <clears throat> excuse me, I can do this rather quickly. And, uh, <clears throat> and also I want to thank you, James, for um, responding to my uh, thread and contest. So... Right quick, what I'm listening to is Barry Phillips, Three Day Moon. Another bass player I highly uh, recommend, respect, and love his playing. Barry Phillips. ECM, this is, this is tight. I need some new teeth, all this. <laughs> anyway, the first question is show three of your grails and <clears throat> I, I, I do have several and um, prized possession items for whatever reason two um, were easy and then the third I there were so many but the first two were really actually very easy for me to choose and let me um, just drop the volume on this a little bit Barry Phillips sound real good um, one of my uh, grails, um, musically, um, number one, music is uh, the number one reason. What's on the record is the number one reason, but what make, makes many of my grails, grails are also um, personal connections and other life connections. And so, Albert Eiler Trio, Spiritual Unity, this is an absolute grail for me. This music, um, it's um, it's not a smooth ride, and yet it is such a rewarding experience. I've listened to this many, many times where it's like it opened up a portal of, of something. Knowledge, experience, like another dimension almost. Truly, on those, in those sorts of um, terms, I want to speak of this album and this music, Spiritual Unity. Those words are perfect, Spiritual Unity, because again, what happens between um, Albert Eiler, Gary Peacock, and Sonny Murray. Look at him, look at Gary. The white cat, the bass player. These fathers, these folks were. It wasn't them. It's the, the music takes over. There's this sonic spot on the album. I ought to know by now exactly where it is to tell you, but it's there. Where it's almost like they, in an audio way, Cross this threshold and you can hear it almost like a sonic boom but it's more like a, a flash of white sound it's on the record it's amazing that's how powerful the uh, the playing is you know the music is free completely free that's another way I'd like to, to uh, describe my experience of this it's like this music is almost completely free of their egos, which is something something very hard to achieve. So that's one grail. As you can hear, I could go on. <clears throat> My other grail with, that had was not even, um, I didn't even have to think about it. John Coltrane, Cosmic Music. This again is another blast directly from like plasma or it's just like a cosmic cosmic rays 
the music is very very intense and direct this is an original first pressing on the John Coltrane label um, besides the fact that it's in that sense um, valuable the way that it came to me is real special um, I can dig the my brother's um, Seca Funk has a copy Chris 4127 basket has shown that he recently found a copy too yeah you know what I'm talking about y'all this is again another amazing chapter of a musician's um, exploration of his uh, what he's doing captured captured on tape excuse me Chris Cole John Coltrane 68 former astral traveler 68 um, when we connected when he sent me um, his first VC LT package I was mystified that there was um, references to um, writer Will Smith it, to a degree because Will Smith um, lived in Omaha forever and I knew him but he was also um, a writer who wrote for Downbeat magazine which used to be the jazz magazine nationally for information and um, so it wasn't that much of a stretch but it still seemed interesting you know it's like hmm this cat who I've never met in Chicago sent me these cool ass records <coughs> <coughs> and there's um, there's something personal out of West you know Will Smith like something like addressed from Will Smith or something but anyway Will Smith is how I got this album and it's very cool I used to be a security guard when I was uh, much younger for a short time at uh, the, the newspaper here in town the Omaha World Herald along with my dad my dad was also a security guard at the time and um, Will Smith was writing for the World Herald anyway there was this uh, instance where he uh, just um, came up to me and, me and my dad on our post and said, hey, uh, a friend of mine is, uh, he needs some money seriously, and so he's like selling his collection, his jazz collection, you know. Will is a, I don't know if Will is still alive. He was an absolute expert on jazz, absolute. And so my dad, and I follow my dad's lead because my dad perked up and said, okay, and it was really cool because, like, we had we had to go down in these um, um, parking uh, spaces underground, like in these caves, you know, like underneath old style in the dark and stuff, and get out of play site, and we're getting these boxes out of the back of a, and it's just this amazing stuff. I still have quite a bit of it. I sold quite a bit too, but uh, just amazing jazz records. Uh, I sold some things that I should have never let go, but this is one that as I'm flipping through and buying things I see this. I see it's John Coltrane. I start to pass it. Will, Will Smith, I'll never forget this, grabs my arm, says, you're not leaving without this record. That was so cool. And he says, you know, I don't know exactly what his words were, but it was pretty much, you are are gonna thank your lucky stars that I'm you can't you know I'm telling you you have to have this record you don't know what you just flipped past you must buy this record and he was it was like you know just one of those messengers sent to you um, I was still in my 20s early 20s when I acquired this the third grail I just I know I went on there but <laughs> Thanks, James. Interview. I like interviews. I do. I like interviews. So, um, the third grail is the Faust tapes. Faust. The German-based um, noise, avant pop, psychedelic, also uh, to me, kraut rock. Well, they had the t they put out the tune in a tongue-in-cheek matter. <laughs> kraut rock on Faust 4. But this is the one. And again, this album, this is an original. I got it when it first came out. Super cheap. Um, it's all... That happened almost right away. And it just fit the way things were going at my time at the time when this came out. I'm just, you know, young. 
working, but hanging out with my friends, um, getting stoned a lot, you know, really enjoying it. And we tripped a lot to this album, and so it got damaged. The cover got damaged right away. This is 1973, the year I graduated from high school. It was my senior year of high school, okay? So, hey, I don't feel no shame about talking about the real deal about how it goes down. Many of you know the story in your own lives, young and crazy. This album was another one where we'd do acid with um, my good friends, and it would, again, just, it would be so psychedelic, so hallucinatory. This album is so good that it just opened vistas, you know. It would be like from going from one bright, amazing scene to another that was unlocked by these sounds, you know. And it didn't have to have the drugs, but you know, but I'm just saying, you know, that that's you know, burned in my memory those wonderful experiences they were. Um, this album holds up without drugs, believe me. <laughs> as far as being um, something amazing, as far as a um, daring construction of sound, very influential on my approach to how I make sound and music. You know, it is music that I'm making. My sound escapes, that I call them, the sonosphere, and then the ambient pieces on Derek 2 and 3 um, directly rise out of um, big influences Faust. Okay, this is going to be longer than I thought. Sorry. How do I organize my collection? Um, I've gone through several periods, um, and so my collection is organized by artist, in alphabetical order A to Z. The only distinction, and I've shown it before, so I'm not going to get up. <laughs> well, the only distinction is over here at the end of the Z's, which is um, Zappa, Zvuki Mu, and stuff. Then I have my compilations separated, my classical separated. And 12-inch singles and techno-electronic-related singles. If I don't have, like, albums by the artist, just, excuse me. See, I didn't want really do that. <laughs> if I don't have um, any other releases by the artist were in the main collection, then their 12-inch singles are over there. So, um... It's a blessing and a curse, but I, I, I go with the blessing of I forget what I have. You know, it's like people like, for example, it would be a daunting, it would be a daunting task for me to try to assemble my metal collection. I do have it. I would literally, literally be finding things again that I just have forgotten that I have. By the way, what we're listening to now is not... Um, Barry Phillips. It went into a Julian Priester track. Um, so that's how I organize my collection uh, by artist, alphabetically, last name, alphabetically. Um, if it's a project, like I said, compilations are over here. Particular projects where I really know what the project is, it's by the title of the project over here alphabetically. Lastly, where do I buy? Primarily over the years, you know, well, every, everywhere. Record stores, thrift stores, record shows, ordering online, um, shopping trips, specific shopping trips whenever I go anywhere. Well, that's how I buy. But, you know, of course I've always had an allegiance to the local stores, you know, and back when there was a bunch of stores and I could manage to um, afford to go to as many as I could, I'd patronize them all. So stores, thrift stores, record shows, flea markets, ordering online, trading, gifts, you know, you name it, okay? Really enjoyed actually um, answering your, um, your thread, James. <laughs> 